So I may have gotten carried away with this one. I was going for a simple space scene, but I ended up creating something more on the abstract side, which you know I think that's okay for this. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to create a space scene from scratch using several effects. So when you get that big NASA project, you're ready to go. So as always, drop a like on the video. It helps us out tremendously and let's get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna create for our space scene is this energy, which could be like Nebula, where it's just really cool to have this here in a space energy scene. So what we're gonna do is we're coming to our tutorial composition. All we have in here is a background and I set the color to be a very dark blue. So to create the energy, we'll go to layer, new, solid. We'll call it Saber and click OK. We will be using the free Saber effect from Video Copilot. So go to Effect, Video Copilot, Saber. The link will be in the description if you don't have the effect. So the only thing we're gonna do here is come here to Flicker and set the Flicker intensity to 30%. All right, so that's all we're doing with the effect because I just wanna have this uh, neon glow light here. So we'll go to effect, distort, and we'll grab turbulent displace. And this is going to create that energy cloud uh, very easily. So what we'll do is come here to complexity and set this to 10. And now you're gonna see that we get this broken up beam of energy and it looks kind of cloudy uh, in a way. So that looks really cool. Now there's a couple settings here I do want to change. Maybe set the displacement from turbulent to bulge. It doesn't really matter. And then we'll come here to the amount. We can set this up to say 100 and the size to 200. Uh, you can go ahead and play around those settings and find the right look for you. And then the last thing we're going to touch here is the evolution. We'll all click the stopwatch for evolution. And this will allow us to type an expression, which of course is going to be time asterisk 10. And this will animate this uh, just by a touch. So it's just slightly animated, but here's what we have. All right, so now that we have the basis of this first element done, now we just gotta take this element, duplicate it, uh, and variate it so we can build out the rest of the scene. Uh, so what we'll do here is to get started, we'll set our blend mode to add or screen, depending on which whatever one you wanna use. Come here and toggle switches and modes and set this to a 3D layer. And what we do here is we have PR and keyboard for position, and we wanna start adjusting these elements uh, in Z space. So we'll set this element to say 2000. And we can take this element and we can move it around our composition. So then, you know, when we're happy with what we've done, we can go to edit, duplicate, and we can move it to another spot around our composition. Perhaps we can change the Z value of the position to say 1500, bring it closer uh, to us, if you will. Now, one thing you'll notice by doing this is we're gonna get some hard edges. So to fix this, what we'll do is go to layer solid settings and check the lock aspect ratio and set the width to 3000. So you want to go ahead and do that to every other layer you just applied previously uh, so we don't get those hard edges. So with our bigger layer here, we can go to our saber effect and we can come here to the parameters core start and core end. And if the layer selected or the effect selected, you can see that we have the anchor points here and we can just manually move them and this will variate the positioning of the effect here. So we're gonna go ahead and create up to say five to six different variations of this and move it around randomly in our scene. So now we have our six duplicates here and you'll see that I offsetted our layers randomly and you know, multiples of 500. Uh, so you can randomly just put them around your composition, change the sizing uh, and you can create a unique look. Now we gotta talk about uh, a camera movement here uh, that will set the tone for our scene. So we'll go to a layer new camera and we'll click OK. So we'll come here to the beginning of our timeline. We'll open up camera one, we'll go to transform and we'll add a keyframe for uh, point of interest and uh, position. And we'll come here to say five seconds. Let's say this scene's gonna be five seconds long. Uh, we can come here and grab our dolly towards cursor tool. Uh, just hit C on your keyboard. Uh, you'll eventually get this icon and you can zoom into your scene just by a touch. And this will create a very nice camera movement uh, into your scene to make it look like you're flying through space. So if you followed our camera animation, your scene will look something like this with other elements added into it, which we will talk about uh, right now, adding some additional elements. Before we move on, as you know, creating motion graphics from scratch is obviously very time consuming and it can be incredibly challenging. That's why we made over 5,000 templates to help you save time and produce awesome work under one subscription. For example, you can preview thousands of templates from any of our packs and click apply. Then you can change the template parameters and then you are done. So if you're looking to get an edge in your business or your career, check out every template we have with our links below.
Alrighty, so the first thing we want to add to our scene are these stars here. So to create this, we'll go to layer new solid and we'll make sure that the solid color is white and we'll click OK, we'll call it stars. Uh, and we click on make comp size and click OK. So then we'll go to effect uh, simulation and we're gonna grab CC starburst. We'll set our scatter up to say like 150, 160, somewhere around that range. Uh, we'll come here to the size and we'll bring this down to 20. And then all we need to adjust here is the speed. So we'll set this to 0.05. Think of the speed as the camera animation because by default, uh, these particles will be flying towards us. And since we are technically zooming into the scene, it'll look like we're zooming in with the stars as well. Uh, so that makes a huge difference. And with our stars added in here, we'll have something of the sorts like this. So another asset we can add in our scene is this you know, fog. Um, you don't have to use it. I think it does help, but I don't know if it makes or breaks your scene. So you can add it into your scene by downloading our project files for free. Uh, and once you put it in there, it'll be overlaid on top of your scene. Uh, and it kind of helps a little bit, but like I said, it's not necessary. All right, so another great effect we need to add in here just to really make this pop uh, is a couple effects. We'll come here to layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll go to effect, you know, noise and grain, and we'll add noise. And to me, this is just looking so clean and crisp. We need to kind of dirty this up. So we'll set the noise amount to say 12%. You can uncheck use color noise. I think it makes a huge difference. And then we'll come here to effect, distort, and we're gonna grab optics compensation. And we can just set the field of view up to say 30. Uh, points there and you can check reverse lens distortion uh, and I think that does make somewhat of a difference in our scene so then when we're done here uh, we'll go ahead and add one more ultimate effect here which like I said I think will help dirty up the scene a little bit we'll grab all the layers go to layer pre-compose and we can call it all all right awesome so we're just gonna do a quick RGB effect to this we'll come here to effect channel and we'll grab uh, shift channels if you watch several of our videos, you probably have seen this many times. Um, but we'll go ahead and set green to full off, blue to full off. We'll duplicate the layer, turn off red, set green back on, duplicate the layer again, turn off the green, and turn on blue back to blue. And then we'll grab our two top layers and set their blend mode to screen. You can toggle switch the modes. So it looks like we did nothing, but if you grab, like, say, one of the layers here and we have PR and keyboard for position, and we just offset it by a couple of points in either the X or Y value. You know, I think it does make a great chromatic difference. It helps kind of dirty the scene, like I've been saying. Uh, it makes it a little bit more grungy, uh, so it's not perfectly clean. So like to our middle layer, we can just like all click the stopwatch for position and we'll do a quick wiggle to this. Uh, open parenthesis 0.5 comma two, close parenthesis, so make sure it looks like that. Um, and that will just, I think, help the scene by a lot. Now, one other effect I like to add in here uh, is the CC lens effect. So we'll go ahead and create another adjustment layer and we'll go to effect, distort, and we'll grab CC lens. You know, we'll set the size up to 460 and all we'll do here is we'll grab the anchor point for the center effect and we'll bring it over to say the left side. Come here to the beginning of our timeline and we'll add a keyframe for center and we'll move forward to say, to the end of animation, five seconds and we can bring this over to the other side and ultimately this will help create a great distorting effect for our scene. So when it's all said and done, you can have a really cool scene like this, uh, especially when you add a title. And we say this in all of our videos, you can download several of our free After Effects and Premiere Pro templates uh, within our Motion Duck extension. That link is below if you wanna get those for free. Feel free to share your work with us on Instagram or on Twitter. Our social media is at Sunduck Film, and always be creating.